Dungeon Doom Hands Let's on Talk Nerds. Lore, a podcast. We're, uh, we're not Memorax. Oh yeah, we're on. <laughs> we're on. Uh, welcome to Let's Talk Lore, uh, another episode where we talk um, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, Chris. What are we talking about? We're talking about uh, a session, just any any regular session. How uh, how you prep, how you play. Um, I really was curious to find out how you, Spencer, prep for our sessions of I Got Doomhand and Skulls of Power. Um, like, how much time do you spend? Um, what's your focus? What do you, what do okay. you, uh, what's your motivation when you go into, into so, your prep? So as a, as a DM, as like a beginner DM, um, I, I so over prepped. It was crazy. Um, but now I feel like I'm a little bit, um, in, in, in previous uh, sessions we've talked about it, I'm a little bit more comfortable, I think. Um, so what I do to prep is I, that's a tough one. So I, I, I guess, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because like you, are you going from the start? Or are you in the middle of the, let, of the let, campaign? Let's, let's, let's just break it down for, and it doesn't have to be anything or say yeah. for a one shot all right so i what, usually, what are what are the things that you try to prepare so i try to prepare at least um a couple encounters i have a puzzle i like to have a puzzle an encounter and a trap um and the encounter doesn't uh, have to be an npc it can be anything um and then i sort of go from go from there um now, if you're if we have a bad guy already set up, or we have a goal already set up, I sort of know wh where the where the guys are, are going. But let's just say we start from scratch. Um, you're gonna have a hook, and you just sort of mm -hmm. develop some. I've been I've been using tables recently um, to sort of set up my my sessions. So instead of like trying to sculpt the perfect uh game which i think is sort of railroading a little bit and i'll we can talk about that um later on um i found that tables are actually a lot easier more useful when it comes to the actual i think with how dungeon dragons should be played uh so yeah i i, the I the have roll of the dice i sort of i sort of kind of know what the players want to do with the sort of game hooks that i i give out um, you know, there's a dragon or the king needs help. Like this next session that we're going to do on Monday, um, the king is going to come. You guys have just can't, uh, ran into low, low, low. And I have a table and I'm going to tell you guys I'm going to be using a table. So it sort of builds suspense with the characters. So they, um, or with the players, um, I found that tables, if you say you're going to use a table for certain particular decisions, um, and you roll it, or even if you give the table, I, I might give the table out to to let to let them see. Uh -huh. There's too too many hooks. I could try it. Um, like these are there's, think, here's a hundred here's a hundred the different randomness of the the roll the die and then we find out what happens. Yeah. So like I like I like that because they don't like know... telling us that there is a table. I think is enough randomness for us to yes. be excited about whatever's to come. And also like, are you making the right decision? So I feel like, but to get to go back to the um, setting up as a DM, I think um, if you know your players and you are in the middle of a campaign, it's a little bit easier, obviously. Um, but I would say tables. Like I used to sit there and try to like make this big lore drop and all this stuff. You would sit back and relax with your lore drops. Um, they'll come at the right moment. Yes. I love the lore drop. You know me. Um, but I don't, you don't have to overdo it. I used to overdo it and it would sort of railroad, railroad it, but you guys are, uh, such good players <laughs> that you kind of just bust through the railroad. Um, well, but how well, do you, there, there, there are times when you would have some story elements that you wanted to put in front of us. So you would sort of find a way to get them in there. Right. Um, 
Oh, I lost my question. How did you, as a player? So I had, I was trying to figure out some questions to ask about prepping because, like, a lot of people think yeah. it's just the DM that really preps this, and um, the players do not. When in actuality, it's everyone. And I think if you're going to have a product, uh, productive game um, where everyone sort of steps away from the game, saying, "Wow, that was." That was crazy. I think that um, the players also should do their own sort of prepping. I'm not mm -hmm. really a player as, as often as, I, as I'd like to be. Eventually, I will be subbing um, in, and hopefully, wink, wink, um, we'll, get a, uh, we'll get a DM to, to do it for us. But um, how, do you, how do you think uh, and how do you, as a player, prep? Well, uh, for, there's a, it depends on the type of game i'm playing like you're saying depending on the game that you're doing your prep is a little bit different for our game with agoth doomhand and this is going to be a little a little reveal <laughs> the main reason why i want us to start recording when we first started recording our sessions is so i could go back and watch them as my prep for what was happening because we were playing every two weeks so we we have families we have life we have full-time jobs so I don't always remember everything, and my notes aren't aren't the greatest. Um, so I secretly wanted just to watch our sessions, and the way that I prep uh, for our games is all while I'm working in the in the like couple days before the game, I'll go back and just listen to the whole game. Uh, I don't pick up on everything, um, but generally on like the I sort of wait till like the day before the day of the game. And my main prep is getting into a mindset of the character, of like stepping into the character itself. So do you, of, do you come up with like, like as a dungeon master, I say, okay, my goal is obviously to have a good time with it, with my friends um, and the players mm -hmm. and to try to lead like the best, most epic, epic, uh, you know, I guess every session is sort of a one-off. Um, but right. as a player, do you do you have like things you do to prepare for that? Like, are you when you get into your character, like, or yeah, when when I'm when I'm trying to get into the character, I often have a playlist of like music that gets me in the mindset of that character. I have one for every character that I'm actively <laughs> playing. It's it's great. what's your playlist? Um, uh, side side question, uh, not on the topic. What's your playlist for stag um the bard here all Let's... right I, I can pull up tangent where's where did i put it is this Hold the on. one that I, the one that you keep chris so if you don't know every time that chris does a spell he sings i feel like we discussed that and <laughs> is this made up of those songs because that's no, hilarious no. that's a, there's a lot of 90s in that there's a lot of 90s no, there there is a lot that <laughs> you have deduce correctly stag there is a lot of 90s there's a lot so, of 90s in stag so the first i'll, I'll give you a, a couple <laughs> on there the first one on there is getting jiggy with it by will smith <laughs> jump nice. from crisscross um <laughs> there's some more modern stuff i do have children's story by slick rick nice <laughs> big pimpin by jay-z yeah i mean obviously you have to have that I, yeah. that one so <laughs> I mean, it, Stag has his style. That's hilarious. But each each character has their own style, and uh, yes. if I'm especially the day of, if I'm working or doing something, or driving in the car, I'll have that playing. Um, but as I'm getting into the mindset, I'll go through um, sometime during the day. I'll go through my notes prior right. of, of the prior session. Notes Just, are like, huge. Quickly read them, read through them because I mean. S for so, Stag, for that character, it feels like the stuff that I write down is important to him. Not necessarily the whole story, but important to him. So to I, had, I had, I um, had recently, uh, you know, I, I thought notes were like, notes are good. Um, a lot of people remember between the four or five people we now have, how many people do we have? Five um, that that play. I feel like between everyone's recap and um, we can, we can almost get the whole picture re picture of what happened. So I don't, and I think because we do it every two weeks, I think that's a perfect amount of time. Mm -hmm. It allows for, 
every because if you do it every week, that's that's a lot of prep. But it depends on how much time you have. Again, you said it's mm-hmm. life balance um, situation. So yeah. when you're prepping, just with anything, you know, I might I, I have a I have an 11 hour job I do every day. Yeah. Everyone has their <laughs> own thing, I, and I have a yeah. family. I've got I like to work out and all that stuff. Um, cool. How much can you do? Um, I think two weeks is a good a good amount of time to like to, well, to prep. The, there's but... the amount of time I use to prep for our game is different from my weekly in-person game. So that one we play every week and it'll all, oftentimes I'll come up like the only time I really have to prep is the time from when I get in the car to driving to my friend's house. Well, and well, and during that time, that's when I started the playlists. Cause I'll get in the car and I'll put on the playlist. And in that drive, it's like getting off of work. You take time for yourself of I'm getting prepared for the game. I'm getting into the mindset and that game we do just like our game. We do a really detailed table review of the five players there and the DM all getting the idea. Yes. Um, But if I have extra time for that game or, and uh, often for, uh, our game if i'm going through my notes beforehand and there's something that comes to mind i will try and formulate some sort of goal of what is my character trying to do right now right i know I, when we brought booter into our game one of my questions is like what's your near-term goal and every session i play i like to have a what is my this session goal right like what because it, it feels like it gives me um, a motivation to to do something, not just sit back and have stuff happen around me, but actively engage in the story. Of like, if no, if nothing happens, all right, what am I what am I gonna do here? So and I what... think that that idea came from my West Marches game, where it's entirely player driven. And like, I sat down a set for a session one time, and the DM was like, "All right, what do you want to do today?" I'm like. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> give me five minutes. Ah, then I freaked out. But in a moment, I was like, oh, yeah, there's all these plots and plans that my character has. And I like to have an idea of that, especially going into it, especially this like, all right, my goal right now, my goal is to try and sell all of our sell all of Aaron's stuff so we can get money and get supplies. <laughs> That's Stag's right. goal for this next section on Monday. So I think so I think having a set goal, I mean, obviously you have to remember, um, usually the goals don't, you know, come to come to be some I mean, you it depends on what you, happens. You can so, you can come into it with a whatever mindset you have and everyone knows when you come into a game everything changes. So I always um I always have we have a group that we have a group chat, um the DM and the players, and sometimes the players will go off on their own and, and have their own group chat, especially with that crack. It was hilarious. That was one time. Um, That's the yeah. only time we've had our own private chat. But I, I, I just love that idea, and I just think that, <laughs> and I'm and I'm assuming that during large fights, like when you finally face Doom Hand again, um, you might oh, have another will. another another strategy session. But when you when you prep as a as a DM, I guess, at, and as a player, obviously read your notes. Um, but you know, there have been times just like you. Um, I know I said that we had two weeks, um, but you know, life happens, and mm-hmm. I went on vacation, or you know, I just got bogged down with the 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 grind, and I didn't have anything anything prepped, and I. I always I'm a, I like to communicate, so I always tell people, "Oh, oh boy, I uh, don't have that much prep tonight." But sometimes those sessions end up being unbelievable. Uh, the session right after the wall, the wall dungeon. Um, so the characters, mm-hmm. the characters were on a boat and they crashed into the wall, uh, like in the Truman Show, and the door opened up and you went inside, and it turned out to be like a, a mind flare layer. Then you guys, uh, someone had got uh, Sprock got. Um, Sarah morphed and you went back on the boat. Like the only thing I had prep for that was like researching how to, how to Sarah morph a person. That was it. Like <laughs> I didn't know anything. I didn't know where you guys were going, what you guys wanted to do, how, you know, cause time was of the mm-hmm. essence. Um, and it turned out to be great. And I just think that like sometimes having a table is the most reliable and you can always fall back on that. So like when I did the, when I did the desert, when I did the, um, the Artemisian forest. And when I did the ocean, 
I didn't really do this much in the in the underdark because I thought the underdark was a little bit better if it was like a little bit more random. I always have sort of a map. I draw it out a little bit of a map, like an area map, um, and then I have about ten th things that could come up that are cool, um, and I, sometimes not cool. Um, sometimes just blank and sometimes those are the best parts where like, you know, the characters get into this new area and it's just the wind or they smell something or it's really not that great of a, an encounter, but it just sort of brings the, the players in. Um, I have a map and I've sort of mapped out kind of what should happen in, in there. Um, and then depending on where you guys go, I have a role. So, all right, now you run into the sentient whale Whiplow who was in the in the water or i had a random one where it was so random like you guys get on the boat for the first time and you guys set sail and i just we just spent like 30 minutes talking about sailing rules and stuff like that which was like cool and like <laughs> but i guess i guess the sailing rules weren't really like we didn't really use them that much but like it was cool to like have a captain and a cook and all that stuff and people had pluses or minuses depending on that um but like one of the first roles i had it was a pixie hand lone, lone star had an amazing docking it's true <laughs> docking yeah um but like you know if you have uh we, we ran into some pixies and i just had to make up a whole bunch of stuff and uh it turns out I, I jotted that down, you know, during the session, if you take your notes. Now, um, I know that at some point there's a pixie uh, story or a pixie hook that we can go to. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like these random um, tables are really good, not just for the planning of your um, of your world, but they can they can open it up a little, a little bit as, as well oh. because of just the sheer randomness. I think the more well, the merrier. It expands your world building in places oh, yeah. that you wouldn't normally have taken it. Yeah. And I also, like, I steal stuff. Like, I I go online and I printed out three lists of 100 um, random city events. And those are all random. I have absolutely... I know we, we if you've... Um, if the viewers have seen the other stuff on YouTube, they they can see that we have a digital game style, but I'm slowly taking it back from like setting up the whole, the whole thing to, I want to have, I want to be able to do all of those roles. And I think, um, are all those encounters. And like, I have, th mm -hmm. there's 300 random cities and this is a huge metropolis. It's a, again, it's like the D and D, uh, New York city, on on acid there's flying boats there's shrimp there's blimps there's everything that you could imagine there mm -hmm. um and i just think that like the last session was really cool how that sort of my idea was okay you're gonna walk down the city street and i know from walking in the city street you can have many different encounters on one city block uh but you know so in one area you can have multiple encounters which is nice Nice to have that set up, and, and if, if it doesn't go well, and like let's just say you botch an encounter, um, botch an encounter, maybe the characters didn't like it, or maybe you screwed up the the hook or whatever. Just move on to the next encounter. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to get bogged down in in um, in moving in it forward. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the over the over uh, preparing. Like if you're so set on this one encounter to really open up things, and the and the characters decide, you know what, let's We're go back. Yeah, like you, then then you think to yourself that whole session's wasted. But really, if you have another encounter set up, then you know what, you guys are going to go do that. Well, let's roll for it. You know, let's see what yeah. happens. You know, and that well, sort of allows you to be, be a little less. Question, you know, is how do, how do you deal with the curveball that? during a session i mean you do all of your prep you set up these encounters uh, you have the great tip of you have your table so you have a lot of different options that can happen but how do you handle the curveball in the middle of a session of oh we're actually going to go to this completely other place or we're going to kill this main npc that you had this whole backstory for uh first the first thing i do 
is I laugh with everyone and I explain to them what just happened. And usually that buys me enough time of laughing um, to figure out what, what to do. Like when you guys were in the desert and I had this whole backstory, you guys were going to follow this guy Zorg and I was finally going to be a player and I was going to be able to like actually participate in the thing. And then Aaron is just backstabs him and steals his magic carpet. And he's like, all right, now we can travel around this desert easily with his magic carpet. I was like, shit, uh, let me uh, <laughs> quickly Google magic carpet D and uh, D rules. <laughs> um, you just have to sort of go. I, I mean, go with it is such a, such a like, loose answer like a lame answer but uh a curveball i mean you know use your use your encounter if you need to figure out like in the real time game situation and you have an if you have something that doesn't go your way and the characters want to go do something completely different you you cannot as a dm say no you can't do that i just i just oh. wouldn't ever do that Unless it was like ridiculous, it's something absurd. Yeah, yeah. There, but there, no, no exists as a DM, but only in those rare cases, right? Of like um, no, but let's yeah. figure something else that, and out. And if that you're works. if you're like thirty minutes or forty five minutes, and maybe an hour into your like two hour, three hour session, uh, just roll one of those encounters that you had. Give yourself enough time to to figure, figure out, out how where to go. On. Exactly, yeah. you know. Well, um, yeah, you, just like your metaphor, you, you got to wait on the pitch to see where it's moving to, and then then you take your step and swing into it. Right. And, and you know, because if you, if you have everything set up, it's going to be, it's not going to be, uh, it's going to be you telling a story. And I, you know, I listened to some guy, uh, I don't know his name, uh, he'll, hopefully he'll forgive me if he ever watches us, but um, he's on the, uh, I think it's the DM layer. I think he, that's his, that's his YouTube. Um, and he mm -hmm. said, I watch this stuff. He's pretty good. Um, very helpful in certain situations. And I, in a lot of tips um, and I was viewing him and he said one, you know, obviously never, um, never never say i mean you can say no but you know it's yeah. within that within that time frame but when you're like uh on the spot like that i just feel like his advice was you can also lean on the on the players mm -hmm. so what do you want to oh. do okay so you're going through the, the 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 woods or whatever now you guys are see a stream now you're going to follow the stream Okay, well, mm -hmm. that wasn't something I had planned. Now you have to develop a whole thing with the stream. The stream leads to the river waterfall, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's really a world building experience um, for you too. It's not like you're not the only one that's lost. Like the players are yeah. lost. You are now in there lost with them. It's, it's a pretty good experience all around. Mm -hmm. um, one question I wanted to ask you about what prepping yeah. was, and this was one of the ones I thought um, I had sent I said I had sent you. Um, what did you, when you sit down for a game? What are your expectations mm -hmm. from the DM? Hmm. I don't have to. Well, I know. I, I, I know think... it's. I know it. I know I'm your DM, so you won't die if if you if you say so. You know, if you criticize, I I like uh, constructive criticism. <laughs> so, so every time I come to a game, the expectation I have for the DM is the same I have for any other player at the table and myself is the come we're coming together to tell a story to have fun. Like I don't have any expectations that they're going to do this crazy thing or have everything set up. Um, because every session be the DM is sort of like the God of the world, but the session can be guided by all the players, by anyone else on the, at the table. So I don't expect the DM to be there and say, all right, you're here, you're going to do this, or blah, 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 blah. It's like the curveball. It's like we follow the river. All right, where are you going on the river? What are you doing on the river? All right, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is what the, you know, the um, encounters that were there. So I think my only expectation is for the DM to be engaged with us as the players in the story as much as we are with them. Right. And I think that so like there, there's there's no like you have to have this many combat encounters planned. We have to have everything organized and controlled. So no matter what we do, you have the answer for us right away. 
when when I DM, there's been many times when I said, you know what, I need a minute to think about this. So you guys RP a little bit or figure out yeah. what you guys are gonna do next. Let me figure out what the hell's going on. I and love we'll that. Come back during, to it during the um during the game. Sometimes I'll and I don't think I do this on purpose. Like I'm like a master DM. Like okay, th- I'm gonna take advantage of you guys. But I love it sometimes when I'm like, all right, this is sort of like you guys can role play here a little bit. That's like that's like AKA I need to look through some stuff. Okay? <laughs> I need a I need a break. <laughs> you well, know? I think the thing that happens a lot <laughs> of the time is there's always like one thing to the next to the next and having that little bit of yeah, pause in the action for story to come out, for player interaction to come out is always as a player, it's always, I always love to to do that have those moments that's when i that's when those backstory elements can be revealed or a disagreement with another player can really come up and not in, uh, affect the rest of the story that's happening if you can have that moment with the other player of making amends or right calling them out on their bullshit or like yeah saying, aaron aaron matt stop killing everyone <laughs> yeah or like uh yeah when when i had that statue i stole this statue uh puzzle i didn't quite run it as well as i as i could have i should i should have read it but i just didn't know where i i couldn't find it um so mm-hmm. i just improved it but the statue was like guarding this whole the, the exit and he was like the, it was said something like um the heroes names that are written um on the stone uh, only the heroes. O- can only pass. the heroes can pass. And there's a stone. There's a stone. Yeah. Then there's a there's a there's a stone that has heroes written on it, but there's nothing else written on it. And so Booter uh, figured out like, okay, I have to write your name, my our names on this thing. And it was really really funny when uh, your character's backstory came out a little bit, and because Stag wasn't really your your na- given like, name like your given name and so you had to sort of explain that <laughs> gave me enough time to figure out what to do on the outside of that um of that on the other side but <laughs> i think another thing to 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 you know to bring it back to the topic that we're talking about which is prepping for a session um so we have you know as a dm i could do a little review for a dm i i just think uh a map is really good set up and when I say map, like a zoomed out map, um, not a general not, map of your not, region. Here's the castle. Here's the here's the witch's tower, mm-hmm. and here's the guys. And there's a forest in between. And that what does that mean? That means that you need. And what's around the forest? Is there a, a lake? Okay, so you need ten encounters for a lake. You need ten encounters for a forest, and you need. Um, you don't need all the encounters, but that would be a good, probably a good set for the session if you're going to be traveling mm-hmm. to um, one of the two options. Now you have your map and you have your thing, and that's and that's pretty much that's pretty much that's I mean that's not it, but that's pretty much like the basics. And I think you could have a good session based on that. I like to have uh, to have um, goals that I've given you. Um, so I like our, our group because I give you guys goals. You know, you have to find these six skulls and somehow we're going to put them together. I have no idea exactly what that's going to be like, which is going to be sick. Um, and to, to, in order to fight this doom hand guy. Um, so that's the overarching theme or, or story mm-hmm. arc, but h- how you get there, if you guys ever do get there, we're on session 70, 70, maybe this week. Um, we have three skulls. We're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I just, um, but your individual player character goals and the actual player you, Chris, mm-hmm. um, are things that the DM needs to also understand. And one of the things that I like to do every other session or every session or so every so often is ask individual players, what is it that you want? Mm-hmm. Do you as a person as a player of D&D, not your, not your your orc made up character, but yeah. you, Chris, do you need something more or do you need something more out of it? Role play. I think Booterbot likes role play. Like I've, I've noticed, yeah. and I gave him a cool point for not killing my NPC, which was nice. <laughs> I was, he was like, Matt, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. NPC killer. Hold back. 
you know. Um, Aaron see, wants to find goods. Wants to find uh, weapons. You know. I don't. Yeah. So. They, no one listens to me anymore when I say stop killing people. <laughs> yeah, but then you kill. But that, but not, not, not lately. Not lately. Yeah. Well, not, not stag. Um, Lone Star was a different story. Yeah. And what about, um, and what about player? Like, I feel like. Well, I, I, mean, I think what you were just talking about is a very important aspect of prep as a player, that communication back and forth with the DM of looking, uh, trying to figure out what we're, what we're trying to get out of playing the game, what our expectations of the game. And a lot of this comes out in our session zero, but it can change throughout the game of like what story, what kind of story are you, you wanting to tell? Um, and then if you go into the player a little bit of those personal player goals, having the, the conversation back and forth with the DM can really bring a lot of that to life. When I was DMing uh, Dragon the Ice Fire Peak, had one character who was a warlock, so the fun whole, I get to be a patron now action. And before every session, they had probably three or four things that they were, were working on with their further patron's goal. And it was just a, all right, here's what I'm thinking for this. Of just giving me ideas and inspiration for the story, the idea, the theme that they had in mind for their character. Yeah. I'm just something that I could run with. And as a player, I, if I have idea or inspiration like that, um, like with, with Lone Star and his family and a lot of his backstory, that was a lot of stuff that was communicated between you and I of like, all right, what's going on? Here's my idea about Lone Star's backstory. Here, this is like the whole thing with Valley's family that Lone Star was trying to steal. Yeah, it's <laughs> that 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 all came up with a communication between you and I of like, <laughs> this is my idea for him. Run with it. I don't want to sound like a, uh, I guess. Oh, I'm going to sound like it. Communication, communication, communication. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes when you're you're setting up your sessions, um, even as a DM, like I take I take notes, I write everything down. Yeah, I write them down fast and everything. But sometimes, listen, I, I forget things. Um, and when you have your characters, and I think that I don't think every game has our type of. I think we have a very good group. Um, so props to that. Cool point for you, Chris. Um, but I'm I just take it. And I'm adding yeah. it for next session. <laughs> um, I just think that like uh, every now and then, you know, the character will say, "Well, what about this or what about that?" And I, I just think that like there, you know, you don't have to seal up your when you're moving forward through this huge epic story that you're trying to tell, even if it's just a one-off. Um, hopefully the goal of the DM, in my opinion, is to have an exciting enough game that people want to play the next session. That is the ultimate goal. Um, so how do you do that? Well, you have to leave a little crumb here, a little bread there, uh, maybe a massive stake of a story hook to come, to come back to. Um, and just, you got to remember, I, I, when I, you got to remember what those hooks are. I recently sat down and I was like, okay, I just went through my first huge uh, notebook of DM notes for our Agoth Doomhand and the Skulls of Power. And I was like, ha the first one's down. Ch- like book one is done. Yeah. And then I got a massive, huge blank one. And I was like, you know what? I am now going to go through as I was organizing all this, all the videos to post on, on, on YouTube. Cause that's when we started to do this. I'm going to post yeah. every story hook that we have. And you know what? There's a lot of cool stuff. So like, if you go back in the water or you go back to the desert or you go back wherever, I already have something set up. So you don't have to start from scratch from those areas. Yeah. Well, no prep that you do in a game for a campaign is wasted. No. It's none. just something that you can use later. Yeah. It's, it's a, all the prep that you do is just filling out your um like you're using your tables, just filling out your playbook that you get to use. And if people take that tangent, go completely somewhere else. Yeah. Just like where you store it, save it for later. They come back. You have all this other stuff there. It's sick. 
<laughs> mm. I think that like the the prepping is so funny at the very beginning as like the the, fir the first couple times I was uh, doing it actually for the first like I'd say month or two that I was doing it uh, which is only six sessions um, I really did not know exactly what I was doing but I you know what I did I made it easy for me and I just confined it to a small I said this before in a previous uh, a previous let's talk lore if you're having an issue DMing or like you're new to it or whatever, start small. Start small. Mm -hmm. Have your 10 yeah. encounters set up. Um, even if you don't know exactly how the encounter is going to go or whatever, how do you even run them? But like confine the players to a small dungeon room and go. Like you, yeah. you don't have to, don't open it up to a huge world and, and then, and then be like confused as to why you're overwhelmed but putting people in a dungeon is not railroading them no a, a dungeon a dungeon is gonna have a path that goes through it railroading would be happens... like you're gonna go to the minotaur place and you're gonna talk to this guy and this guy's gonna tell you this is where the key is and you're gonna go to that key you know it's just it's just well, not the railroading the way I, I like to think about it is you're in a video game and you keep trying to go to all these other places and they're like, no, sorry, this door is locked for now. This yes. door is locked for now. This door is locked for now. The only door you can go to is that one at the end of the hall. And so you, you go, oh, fine, I'm going to go at the end of the hall. You railroaded me one game, but that's because oh. I just know, I know that I know that like all, all I wanted to do was like go role play. Listen, I love role play. I was going to go over and do your thing. Hey, how you doing? You know, and you were like, you were like this huge guy takes your arm and sort of pushes you down easily into your chair. And you acknowledge that he's really strong. And I was like, hmm, does he now? You know, and I was like, okay, Chris, all right, let it rip, baby. And sometimes as a player, I feel like you have to just like, don't, I understand everyone wants to break rules and they want to break the game and all that stuff. But like, you got to give a little bit of a, a little bit of rope too. You got to your players need a little bit of rope, and the DM needs a little bit of rope. Don't just oh, absolutely. if he's railroading you, it's because it's probably because he's stuck, and, and, he, and he just wants to get you guys at a place where it can open and let you be free. Yeah. Right. So, like, let let me finish this two minutes of what I'm trying to say, and I yeah. know I've done it as a player to you of like trying to jump in and do all this stuff, and you're like. Let me finish what I'm saying. Let this whole scene, <laughs> just like last session, I was excited to enter Trigar and explore it. And I was like, there's a couple times my mic was muted and I was happy that I wasn't interrupting the story that was happening. <laughs> so funny. Uh, last time was everyone. So if you guys didn't view it, uh, view, you can uh, join us on, on Monday night for our, for the Metropolis, which I think is running very smoothly. It's we've only been there for yeah. one one session, but it's about to open up in a massive way um, because they rolled an eight on our table, and King Lolo Lolo has shown up, mm -hmm. um, bearing his game multiple game hooks. Um, but everyone, when we got there, everyone went invisible. So guess what? Invisible people can't do. They can't role play. So it all kind of like had. Uh, had Booterbot get in there and do it for him, which is hilarious. That's not entirely true. I think uh, Sprock role played the shit out of his character. Uh, yeah, it's actually, you know what? Cool point for Sprock, but he's not, if, if he views this, cool point for Sprock. He murdered someone, but I set that up for him. I set that up nicely. Yep, you did. Nicely. That was so good. All right, so I've, let's, well, sum, let's summarize. Yeah, let's summarize this. Well, I was going to say that we've talked about all of these ways that we like to prepare. So what, what are three tips that you would give a DM um, about preparing for a session? So don't. It doesn't. Have, it doesn't have to be concise. It can just be yeah. things or ideas. Okay. Communication. What do your What are your players' goals? Because if you want your players to come back, letting them struggle but reach those goals is ultimately how to have a good the, that good experience and take that however you want it could be any type of goal um two your your prepping does not need to be an epic story this is what the layer to bring back to the layer dm the dm layer mm -hmm. uh dungeon layer i think is what it is um he said 
that if you want to tell an epic story, just go write a book. Mm-hmm. So this is, we're not writing a book here. We're playing a game. Yeah. So you don't need to let the players help develop that. But when it comes that, when it comes to prepping there, just know that you don't have to have all, all this lore drop. It doesn't have to be like a, an episode or a, a movie, Lord of the Rings or a game of Thrones episode. Mm-hmm. Just let it go and don't be so confined. And, and, and the, the last one, and here's the, the biggest one is tables will get you out of almost any situation that you are overwhelmed with. Oh my God, he, they killed this guy. Oh, this happened. You know what? I have a table, Chris. It's called the weather table. And guess what happens when you kill an NPC that I didn't want you to kill? There's like going to be a big storm of knives coming down. You know, like... <laughs> the good old fashioned knife storm i stole that i still i stole that um so like you can it's just just a perfect example someone if something happens and the guys decide to go another way you know what as a dm you have to let them go that other way but mm-hmm. i forgot who something says that happen. yes but uh a big cloud comes in and it starts hailing and when you look up you do a quick perception check. You realize the hail isn't hail. It are, it's knives. Now you have a cool 30 minutes to figure out what the hell you're going to do. So, like, that's yeah. my that's my thing. Um, don't tell the story. Let the players help you tell the story. Uh, get your tables, and uh, you know, you don't have to you don't have to have everything prepped. What, what would you say your three your three um, suggestions are for um, a recommendation? Yeah, tips. Tips for players. Um, so I think the the first one is one we talked about is figure out your short term goal. What what is your what are you trying to accomplish in the next say two to three hours with your character? Um, take the time. The second one, take the time to understand to to get into your character. You don't have to do the voice. You don't have to do anything, but understand all of the stuff, all of the, the the prep you did in your character sheet, all those ideals, bonds, flaws, all that. Give yourself a refresh of what that what your character's life means to it. Like for me, like a playlist and another thing I love to do of getting into character is go through my character's inventory. Oh yeah, that's cool. That of because I always find random stuff that I forgot about, and oftentimes I'll find things I need. And going through my inventory, um, I'll one of my favorite things to do if I'm trying to find that goal or motivation or figure something out, go through my inventory. And in the and Beyond, they especially on the app, they have a list of equipment. And I'll just scroll through the equipment of like, what can my character use here? What is something that could be exciting that my character could use and do something with? So even if I'm I don't get it, or I'm or I'm not going to be at a shop where I can buy it, it's just something that I can think about of, oh, rope can be helpful, or maybe a cart or a wagon. What can I do with a cart or a wagon? Oh, can we find one? So I I love. Just going through inventory, going through as equipment of options and uh, possibilities of ways to interact with the world, and like your your um, your notes. I forgot we didn't we didn't mention notes at no. all this time. But no. um, it was that your was that was that so? I think. Well, yeah. For for. I think those those would be more than anything, more than yeah. even looking back at my notes of try and get, uh, understand your character, find out what their goal is, and absolutely check execute. your inventory. Yeah, execute. <laughs> how much? How much? How many times have you been scrolling through your inventory and find this one random thing of like? I have no idea what this is. Oh my god! When did I get this? I got dude, this two years ago. Dude, I used to go. Th- I used to over prep so much. I used to go through your inventory for you. I Aaron and Sprock. Sprock has like 
Sprock has been playing for 60, 70 uh, sessions. That's seven times at least a minimum of two and a half hours. That's so many hours. He's definitely yeah. accumulated more inventory than he has at all. And I specifically set up encounters for those p- specific items to one, get lost, and like two, to, to use. And mm-hmm. no one ever picks up on the fact that those, I'm like, there is a Wonder Wand like sta- a guy holding that's hold. it says Wonder Wand statue. It's a guy with a open hand. Like this is an example where you yeah. put your Wonder Wand and something happens. And like obviously you're not going to get that Wonder Wand back. But like no one ever picks up on it or like the little mushroom things that like came, came out in the forest. No one gave no one, you know, it's funny, but yeah. Um, bringing things full circle. You don't have to worry about um, because you just move on. Uh, I don't, it'll eventually come full circle. I don't think you have to worry about that, but as a no. DM um, communicate, and I think as yeah. a player, you also communicate. Absolutely. And I think that, uh, showing up prepared for a session means that you're ready to be engaged um, mm-hmm. and you're ready to have fun and not necessarily confined to a strict story. And that was my Absolutely. genuine, yeah. you know, that's my recommendation. Um, and that, I guess, sums up our topic on um, how to prep. I know that we're going to be talking about that again It's at some point soon. Um, yeah. But... Uh, that'll that'll do chris um again i'm spencer and this is chris there you are um this is let's talk lore um the podcast where we discuss things dungeon dragons um hit subscribe if you haven't roll high roll. and and subscribe stay tuned real quick we're gonna create our npc which speaking of random like i have absolutely no idea who that's gonna be so that should be pretty good <laughs> and don't forget to join us this next monday at 7 30 or so yeah for uh next episode of ag out doom hand and skulls of power yeah you want to know how to run a massive city learn with me because i have no idea either really but <laughs> i got some tables plenty